So why is it that a growing number of Canadians of health, disability, uh, professional associations are calling for a really robust monitoring system for medical assistance in dying in Canada. I think there is a growing concern that the information that's currently being collected uh, among patients or of patients who are requesting access to medical assistance in dying and being approved for it and receiving it doesn't give us extensive enough information uh, Canadians and governments enough information to really report on whether the system is fulfilling its objectives, which is to ensure that people who are accessing the system who uh, have fully consented to this and have, a, have had access to alternative courses of action other than medical assistance in dying. There's a couple of areas of concern with the system as it exists, as, as it exists uh, and that organizations want addressed. Uh, one is we don't, we simply don't know who's requesting access to MAID and whether there are factors associated to their income, their lack of support, the nature of their disability, their uh, living in remote and rural locations where they can't access support they need to live. We, we're not collecting information about that. We're not collecting information about what medical practitioners have provided as alternatives uh, to respond to the suffering. We're not collecting information about medical practitioners' understanding of what it is that's motivating this request. What is the nature of suffering that people are actually experiencing that's causing them to make this request? And we know from the research in jurisdictions around the world that what motivates people uh, can be these factors associated with poverty, can be uh, associated with living in long-term care facilities where people are not, are, are, are not getting the support that they require to, for themselves to experience dignity and at some point can't find a reason to continue living because of that. So a number of organizations have been calling on the Government of Canada to increase uh, the, uh, or to make more robust the requirements in a few areas. Collecting that information about income status, social status, whether or not people have had access to the supports they require, the nature of their disability, and how they explain the nature of their suffering. And, and second, to hear from uh, medical practitioners as well as the primary care team around the person that has the responsibility for ident identifying what the, those alternative courses of action might be, what's actually been tried out, what's been offered to the person as, a, as another way to address the causes of their suffering. And then a third source of information that um, has been recommended is to give an opportunity to patients themselves who are requesting access for, for medical assistance in dying and who are receiving it or have been approved for it, to explain why they have made this request, what it is about the nature of their experience and their suffering that um, has led them to, to make this request. And uh, our view and the view of a number of organizations is that this kind of information is, uh, doesn't interfere uh, um, uh, unjustifiably on people's privacy given what's at stake because what's at stake is that people may die who have actually not received the access to supports or, or alternative courses of action and as Canadians and as governments we need to know if we have a, a, made, a medical assistance and dying system that is fulfilling its objectives to ensure that people who access it have fully understood the, uh, and appreciated the nature and consequences of this decision and had been given access to all the supports and opportunities uh, possible. Surely we owe that to Canadians who are in, in, at, at this point in, in their life where they're considering uh, this decision and we want to make sure that we've got a monitoring system that is living up to its objectives.